Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It has been a beautiful week. I mean, weather-wise, we've had some fun projects. It's been really relaxed. Yesterday, it got to 52 degrees. Today's high is 51. Uh, it's just, I was outside. According to Tempest, we got to 54.3 degrees. Yesterday, yesterday. I, I believe it. I was outside doing flower bed cleanup. And it was, I mean, glorious. I have not or I can't remember or recall a December with such beautiful weather and we're getting plenty of moisture. Yeah. So like. Yeah, like it's wet. You can come in with muddy shoes. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's just wonderful. It's been awesome. I hope you guys are having this great of a December as we are so far. Before we jump into the videos from this past week, I did want to mention some things about our shop. Christmas um, sale. Yeah, gardenanswer.com, uh, because we've seen some questions about some of our merch and then shipping and that kind of thing. So I just heard from Aaron this morning, if you order by December 15th, midnight, by midnight. you should receive it by Christmas. Theoretically. Yeah, I, I mean, mean like if the UPS truck, you know, like Get stranded. Runs, get stranded or yeah. runs into. I mean, like we can't control that. Right. But like theoretically, it should it should arrive. And that's for standard shipping. Yeah. Um, also, and you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, because Aaron ran me through the sale items, and I can. Thirty five percent off our original garden answer. Garden answer. Answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking after Samantha. She calls it ice age. Ice age. <laughs> ice age. So it's like rubbing off on me. So our original Garden Answer logo merch shirts, 35% off those, 25, 20% off. Every, all the other Garden Answer merch. All other Garden Answer merch, which does include the Russell Cheddar special. That's in there. <laughs> and then 10% off of Felco Power Planter and... Green Stock. Green Stock Vertical Gardens. Um, so anyway, that's what we're running there at GardenAnswer.com. I did want to show you some Felco stuff that we've just recently added. Let me bring it into the frame here. So we do have Felco 2s, of course. Like this is my uh, Felco of choice. This is the one I've used forever. Uh, it is actually for larger hands. And mm -hmm. I don't have, I wouldn't consider my hands be super large. And I don't even hold them right. I hold them with my finger curved around <laughs> like this. <laughs> but to me, that's like, this is home. Yeah. Should we do pruner <laughs> ASMR? ASMR. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Felco 2s. There's also Felco 6s, which are made for smaller hands. And then 6s. No, not smaller hands, medium hands. Medium hands. Well, smaller... It says it on the box, I think. Smaller there... hands than large. <laughs> smaller than medium large. Hands. Yes. And then Felco 16s are the left-handed version of this one. You know, keep in mind that with the smaller ones, you can't cut as large a diameter of branch, but you can still cut through quite a lot. Um, and then we also have the 14 which is the smallest right yes that's for actually for small hands yeah these are really good for floral stuff like floral arranging and then we have felco fives which i have absolutely no experience with i'll be quite honest we just got those because it's uh it's felco's like budget option uh -huh. so like if you can't swing getting you know the felco two it, it might be a good option i haven't actually used it either but we thought it might be good to throw on the the store um, it, I mean, feeling it versus the two, the two is much it's definitely, nicer. Definitely it's definitely, definitely different. Nicer. But it's also like half the price. Yeah, and for a little bit larger hands on that one. And then this is what I'm excited about though, because I, I don't even real, like didn't realize how much I would use these. Yeah. This is the Felco 3.90, 60 and 10. <laughs> one of them has a straight blade. It's like a Swiss Army knife kind of, uh, kind of. It's not like a Swiss Army knife. There's well, only one, two blades on this one. Yeah. And they're straight. It looks like a Swiss Army knife. And then this one has one blade, which is curved. And this is the one I used on the water lily thing, destruction. And I've used these a lot, and they're really sharp. So anyway, just wanted to run through those things. Um, now we will jump into the videos from this week. So the first one is bringing the sphere topiaries out of retirement for a couple of winter containers. I haven't used those spheres in a while and I picked them up at my parents garden center a long time ago I remember when I very first used them like they were sold out everywhere well it was hard to even find like them because it's even like you have to find them. a metal worker or something yeah you know? but it was like we couldn't remember the brand down at the garden center so I couldn't even really look up where we originally got them from and when we finally found a source they were out of them I think you can get them more readily now can you I think so I mean, other people have found them and picked them oh, up gotcha. um, throughout the years. But anyway, I used them for several years. And then, you know, you kind of want to retire things for a little while because, you know, you just want a new look. And then it was time to bring them back out. I think out. that's like a certain personality trait. Like some people retire things. They, you know, they want to like move on to something different all the time. And then there's some people who are like, no, well, we do the same thing. It might thing. be different too when you're creating videos and you're wanting to do projects, but you don't want to do exactly the same thing oh, every sure. year. Yeah, and that, I know I'm one to talk sense. because I did exactly the same thing to the balcony area. 
this year that I did last year and probably the year before because I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, but I do try to do different things. Yeah, anyway. Um, so I did those spheres and I ended up planting the ornamental kale and the dusty miller that came out of the fall arrangements that were in the pots that the spheres went into. They're doing great in the greenhouse. Um, so I thought I could use the cabbage for some floral arrangements and dusty miller holds really well. Claire Ledoux said, I have a question. The light in your sphere topiary, are they soft white or LED? I looked at Amazon, but I don't know which one to pick up. So those came from Gardner's Supply. They're, de they're LED and they are a warm white. Definitely a warm white. But I would imagine you could get stuff like that on just anywhere. <clears throat> yeah, and I don't even know if Gardner's carries them anymore. Yeah. Because that was a lot of years ago. I mean, I've used them, in, remember in those sticks in the big... Yeah, oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that's what I used. Uh, like 2017? Because... Yeah. 18 maybe? Maybe. I think that was pre-Benjamin. Maybe. But I wanted those specific ones because they're really long and they're plug-in. And fairy lights, finding plug-in fairy lights was a little bit more difficult at that time. Because out there in the cold, batteries just don't last as long. Uh, and I didn't want to have to use so many batteries either. I needed something that could plug in. So they, they've worked out really well. Uh, Bill Davis said, where do you get the spheres from? They're pretty nice looking. They are nice and they're heavy duty metal. And again, I mean, maybe we can find a link. We should bring those into our shop yeah. if we can find them. Because they really are pretty. Uh, Sonia said, how do, you, how do you tell if you can reuse the dirt in the pot? Well, typically, I like to do a full recharge once a year. I used to do it after every season. <sighs> what a, a tremendous amount of work. Like season is in uh, like spring, spring, summer. summer. Fall. Mm -hmm. And I would always use my fall soil for winter containers and then swap it out in the spring so we could start brand new again. Uh, but now I'm just realizing I don't think it's necessary. I think doing at least the top half, especially if it's a large pot, is really good. Or if the soil is overtaxed with roots. You know, a lot of times, like if you have a purple fountain grass in a, in a container, it will utilize all the soil and it will all come out in one piece. You can't just cut the grass off and then plant in that soil again because it's too bound up. Uh, so you can kind of tell when you get in there. Just from like my anecdotal evidence, it seems like as it doesn't, I don't know. I don't really think, especially if you're planting annuals, I don't really think that they need a whole lot of new soil. I think if you just top dress it with new, new stuff, as long as you're fertilizing. That's the key. I think that's probably the biggest part. Yeah, because, you know, when you start with fresh soil, it's really nice to work with. Uh, and there are nutrients in there to begin with, which is nice. Uh, and nice to do it that way. Uh, but if you're feeding them, because you know, that nutrient doesn't last forever in the, in the soil because of all the water that we put in our containers, mm -hmm. it leaches out pretty fast. That's why we have to do weekly uh, fertilizer for our annuals. The other instance where I will toss soil is if I've had a bug problem. If there's been plants that have had spider mites or even an aphid problem, I do not mess with keeping that soil. Even if it's light and fluffy, we get rid of it. Don't want to perpetuate the problem. Uh, Brandon said, do you grow any of the varieties of greens that you order? The incense cedar is particularly stunning looking. Uh, we grow some similar things, but the stuff that I order, uh, we don't have those particular varieties. Like fir, we can't grow in, at our elevation. And I think the dry heat, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go an hour and a half away from us into the hills or an hour away even, and you can find fir and that type of pine. We can grow pine. We need to make a list of things that you like to cut on and in the dirt lands, mm -hmm. like specifically plant extras those of those things. Yeah. So that, you know, when it comes to holiday time or mm -hmm. whenever you want to cut, we have things kind of like specifically for that purpose. That would be nice. I like the way your brain works. Yeah. Let's make a list sometime. Okay. Uh, the Mainer said, everything looks great. What does she mean when she says wild hair? She said it a few other times. When you get a wild hair, it's when you get like a half-cocked idea. Yeah. Or you get like a spurt of energy. And so you just go off and do something that was unexpected. Yeah. Is that a good explanation? Yeah, I think so. Next video is our experience with the new annuals for 2024. Uh, so we just wanted to sit down and do a kind of a roundup in one place, sharing our experience with the annuals that will be out next year that will be available to you guys at garden centers to just share what our experience was growing them this past year. Uh, and you know, we had them in a lot of videos. Um, I planted a lot of them in ground and in the hay racks, which it was so nice to have that experience mm -hmm. and really see how that worked uh, worked out. I think next year, because we had one drip line coming up the fence and then it fed all 22, I think, hay racks. I think we should have one come up, feed 11, and then run another main line and have it come up and feed the other 11. Oh. 
because I, we were having some issues at the very end and that always seems to happen. Yeah. I think I think we can solve it by um, using different emitters. I think we're going to use so? yeah, we're going to use the Rainbird really? emitters. Really? Yeah. Well, either way, we were supplemental watering the last like eight hay racks toward the end and they got missed a few times like over the weekend or during, you know, where, whenever, and they were struggling yeah. by the end of the season. But we learn every year, you know, how to make the process more efficient and make we things We still got a long... Thrive. We did. Like growing season we out did. of them. It just, yeah. we could have gotten a little bit longer if the water had... Yeah. Not malfunction, but uh, Natalie said, what are the dimensions of your hay racks and how many plants did you start in each? You can watch the video. We'll link it down below when we planted up uh, for at least the quantities of things I planted in there. Those are the 30, are those the 36 inch hay racks, mm -hmm. right? Three feet? I, you know, they come, it, it's kind of irrelevant what we planted because you can get them in like any dimension you need. Um, we got those from Garden Artisans. So if you go to Garden Artisan's website mm -hmm. and just look at all the different options. You or if can you're get... local, you can go to my parents' garden center. They yeah. sell them. Yeah. Um, so. Well, a lot of garden centers. I mean, you, you yeah. can probably find them reasonably at most garden yeah. centers. But I think the thing with those, the key is buying the good inserts, the good forms. And my parents yeah. get like the pre-molded, like thicker forms that last for a yeah. while. Like if you want, I eked out like three or four seasons with the chicken coop one. I mean, it had it by the end of this season. I punched a big hole through the bottom when I was just reaching in to get a plant. Yeah. Um, but that's a lot of years. I think there is a difference in the quality of the hay racks as well. I think you can mm -hmm. get cheapo yes. hay racks that are kind of flimsy. Yeah. And the ones we have are beefy. Fairly, yeah, they're pretty beefy. They really are. Beefy. I wonder if that's a word that... <laughs> people did I say that or did you you did oh I did <laughs> uh, bonkers said does anyone know what product is used to spray on the super tunias I have a serious budworm problem there are two different things that we use to spray and it kind of depends on the approach you want to take they're both for organic gardening but one of them is BT which is a bacillus thuringiensis um, you might also find it labeled thuricide and it's a budworm or caterpillar specific spray it doesn't uh, affect anything that's flying around it doesn't affect bees bees none of that um in fact i don't even know if it would affect the adult stage of the the budworm it'll just affect the lar or the caterpillar stage because they have to ingest it right and it kills them from the inside um so that's a really good one and a very benign like the most benign you can get i feel um, for taking care of a problem like that you want to make sure when you spray it's once a week we do it we start like right away it's kind of a preventative because we know we have the issue here but we do once a week and you spray the top of the plant the undersides of the like lift that canopy up spray till it's saturated and then put that wand inside the leaf canopy and spray inside to where that plant is just dripping um, the other thing you can do is the captain jack's dead bug that is a spinosad based spray which that's something that they found in like do you remember no i don't it was like somewhere in the caribbean wasn't it oh really yeah like bahamas like some natural what, what yeah. is it well spinosad Sp <laughs> i don't know don't quote me on that <laughs> anyway. it was probably made in a lab somewhere <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's more of a uh, broad spectrum so it will kill the budworm but it will also kill aphids which can be a problem on super tunias and, and uh, super bells as well but it will also i mean it's a more broad spectrum insecticide so just be careful about when you're spraying it usually the best time is right at dusk so your honeybees have gone in for the night. They're no longer working. You can spray your plant, take care of it, and then the bees aren't going to be feeding on that plant until the next day. So that's the best approach. Um, Barbara said, do you know which plants you will grow together for your pots? I would like to pre-order two, but I'm not sure what to order for Thriller, Spiller, Filler, if that makes any sense. Um, Proven Winners has like a really extensive list of that container is, yeah. ideas. That's the best thing. You go to their website, go to, uh, is it just gardening ideas tab on the top and then container recipe search? Yeah. I think. You could also probably just Google Proven Winners container recipe. Yeah. And that, it'll pop up all that. It, the nice thing about that too is that you can fill in like shade, part shade, if you want annuals or if you want perennials or both. And that mm -hmm. gives you, it just generates a bunch of different ideas for different situations. Uh, Miranda said, I never understood the mini Vista title. Does it mean they grow like a Vista but have smaller flowers? Yes. Or does it mean that they grow a little less than a Vista? I do feel that they are a little less aggressive than the Vista Vistas, like the Vista Fuchsia or Vista Snowdrift. Uh, but they are, they do fill in the space. Uh, and they do have smaller flowers. So I would say probably a little less on both accounts, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. But not significantly. No. 
I no. mean, it is the flowers are significantly smaller, mm -hmm. but I don't think the growth habit is that significantly smaller. Well, it's you close. put anything up next to a bubble gum or a snowdrift, you're gonna have a hard time. Or um, what was that one that we planted out here? Oh, jazzberry. Yeah, jazzberry. Whoa. Jeez Louise. Yeah, that was a that was a big one. Uh, Beverly said, "Love petunias, but Texas heat is rough on them. Any suggestions?" I would think that they would love it. I would be really, I mean, unless you're running into like, water? I can't water them enough yeah. or, you know, whatever it is. But, um, I would be, I mean, they can take, I think they can take Texas heat. Yeah. We don't live there. So don't yeah. get mad at us for that answer. <laughs> unless, you know, if it doesn't cool down, that's, that's, that's the thing true. I have heard that if it doesn't get below like 80 or 90, that they can tend to melt. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just. It's not cooling down at night. You should try James Britannia next year. Safari Dusk, try that one. If you can get your hands on it, I think you would be amazed about the color coverage and the, the, the plant's ability to handle everything. You know, the guy that um, works at Proven Winners that selects new plants, he mm -hmm. lives in Austin, Texas. Oh. And he grows everything. Texas I don't know is huge. It is huge. I'm sure they have like tons of different microclimates. Yeah. We're so helpful. <laughs> It's a good thing we do these recap videos. <laughs> uh, Vicky said, I want them all. Can these be grown from seed? They cannot. They are all like tissue. Do so you call it tissue culture? No. I don't know. Propagation. I don't know. But they don't have seeds for those plants. Uh, Renee said, are you going to go to the flower show in Seattle in February? We are not planning on it this year. We've gone like the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it was great. We did a meet and greet last year and that was so fun. Uh, that was my like my best flower show experience. I didn't have to get up and on stage to do anything, and I was able just to stand in one spot and get to meet a bunch of people. That was really quite fun. I loved it. I think one of the reasons we have gone to that is because we can get direct flights from Boise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and true. it just feels like a really easy. It's like an hour long flight mm -hmm. or something, so it feels accessible. Yeah. Corey said, thank you so much for recapping all of these in such an organized way. So helpful. Will you guys be planting anything special next year in celebration of Garden Answers' 10-year anniversary? Maybe a catnip garden for Russell and his brothers. Yeah, what are we going to do? I don't know. You and I typically don't like celebrate milestones like that. Mm -hmm. We just kind of let it come and go. I think we're too focused on just the next thing. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about that this last week, which I don't normally think about it, but somebody commented about... Our 100,000 subscriber plaque is still up in our kitchen. They're like, why do you have your 100,000 subscriber plaque up in your kitchen? First yeah. of all, I thought, well, because I had an empty space there. And two, we have the million subscriber <laughs> one. And it's just in a closet somewhere. Right. It's probably getting all scratched up. Well, yeah, it's the old uh, silver play button. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I actually, when we got the million, I ordered the new version of the silver because I thought, well, we'll probably, we'll put it up somewhere. And then we just never did. <laughs> Maybe one day. Uh, Vicky said, what is a flower that is planted in the same spot, same pot as the Supertunia Bermuda Beach? It's so pretty. There are two. So there's the vintage coral superbells in there. And then that is the Stratosphere White Gara, the, the centerpiece, which is one of my favorite centerpieces. I think it's so uh, wispy and magical, like fairy-like. I love it. That was a really pretty container. I really liked it. I feel like the vintage coral was a little deep. Mm -hmm. in pink for the Bermuda Beach, but it was a fun one to try out. Well, and you sure. didn't love the new color of the Bermuda Beach. No, I like the softer old color, but it's still a good plant. And I don't mind the, I mean, obviously I put it right up in front of our house. Yeah. I don't mind it that much. Uh, next video is a December garden tour, our first snow of the season. We try to get out every year when we get our first decent amount of snow. And uh, it had started the night before. It was kind of like crystally and like real small. And then it stopped for a while. I took a, a reel when yeah. I was going on because I thought, this might be our only snow of the season. I better <laughs> capture this. Uh, but we woke up to a couple of inches and it was beautiful. It's all gone now, which is the best kind of snow to get. You get a little bit enough for the kids to play in. In fact, I still see they got rakes out, mm -hmm. They're like raking the snow. Um, the kids can play in it for a little while and then it goes away and you can start working in your garden flower beds yeah. again. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, anyway, we got out like first thing that morning with her, before there was much activity, yeah. you know, uh, Sue said another great video. I just adore your family. Thank you. Question regarding the three trees planted close to each other next to the pond. How big do those get? Quite large. Quite large. Um, we might <clears> have to limb them up. 
we might have to limb them up, but I think, I think it'll be fine. I think plants sense when they're close, and I think there, there is definitely a, an element of overplanting that we don't want to do, but I, I don't know. I feel like that's going to be good yeah. with a little bit of maintenance every yeah, year. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things. You know how yeah. I was telling you about how like, it really bothers me when you can see a tree that has gotten mature mm -hmm. that was never pruned? Um, not on the inside necessarily, but like low. And so it's got these really low, like branches coming from like two feet off the ground or three feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. And like that should have been pruned up along mm -hmm. the way. So it's like a shade canopy instead of like jutting out from the ground practically, mm -hmm. unless you're trying to make it kind of a, what, what's the word for that? Like, um, not artistic. A centerpiece tree kind of like, like what, a, like what we have in the like a golden, sculpture, almost. golden rain tree. What would yeah. you call that? multi trunk yeah I but it's like a garden sculpture in and of itself aesthetic is the wrong word structure not structure i don't know just cut that part out don't cut that part out <laughs> <laughs> okay also will you be putting in a gate to your property i know you talked about it but haven't said any more we are actually we have a gate man coming today <laughs> a uh, gate, we, man. <laughs> gate and fence man we're having some old fence taken out and some new fence put in and um he's gonna also look at putting in a gate yeah so anyway it's it's on the docket we just i don't know when we'll have to get a bid from him <laughs> see but don't talk about budget because if you talk oh, about yeah, budget somebody... yeah you well, always get everything you um, talk about how you can't I afford it i do want to put in like a nice gate that has the electronic uh like like the button stuff mm -hmm. like not just a you know plain old gate mm -hmm. it needs to have remotes like a garage door yeah but also buttons that people can i don't know how that works with like ups and fedex do you do they just have a code that's attached to your address to where they can just Probably. get in because i don't want them like bugging me all the time to get in yeah i don't know you have to figure that out huh. liz said breathtaking views of the gardens what is the best way to get rid of a volunteer tree growing in the middle of a shrub or bush you can cut it off and there's like a paintable uh stump killer it's a little, little bottle and it has a brush attached oh, to it oh yeah you used we that used one time. it um what is it called it My worked pretty goodness. well didn't it yes it did yeah stump and vine killer from bonide that is what i used that's what I would do is cut it off and then paint it with that stuff and you shouldn't have to deal with it anymore. Uh, Becky said, why does the oak that holds its leaves through winter bother you but not the linden? Genuinely curious, love your channel. Channel, Our lindens don't hold on to their leaves, so I wonder if there's another tree I should be concerned about. You know, the oaks holding onto their leaves don't really bother me so much. That is new information. I thought they did because you don't like things that look extra brown in the winter to like add to the brownness <clears throat> of our landscape. Well, you know, everything kind of looks poor unless there's a dusting of snow on it. But yeah. I think what it was about like the old oaks was that they had brown leaves all the way down to the ground because mm. they were like that. The, I don't know what they call those. They were just an old pillar oak of some kind. I yeah. don't know. But I like as long as they're trimmed up and the leaves are up above, you know, my eye line, mm -hmm. then I, I don't mind that. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. The thing that that makes me nervous about those big oaks right around the pond is that you know when you have more mature deciduous things around your water areas a lot of people net their ponds in the fall during leaf drops so that all those leaves stay out of the water so we can do that for everything else but if those big trees and they get like 60 by 40 you know if those huge awesome. trees are holding on to all their leaves over the winter then we're gonna have to net in the spring as well when they're pushing out all their leaves and I don't know how long that takes. Yeah. That just bums me up to have to put a net over something for that long. Sure. It's kind of like having a swimming pool and having to put a cover over it for five or six months out of the year. They don't, they don't never look that great. Indoor swimming pool, easy. Oof. Problem solved. You're good at, at solving the problems. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jane said, where do you have your bird feeders? So we have two bird feeders uh, close, close to our house in the crab apple tree up front. And then we have one bird feeder on the grapevine structure, which we took down during the summer. And our neighbors love to watch the birds. They like uh, downloaded some bird identification apps and everything. They were so bummed out. I got a text message like, yeah. what happened to the bird feeder? Um, we took it down when all the berries were ripening and grapes because we thought, well, we just provided like a wonderful feast for these birds and we're attracting them all with our feeder. So we took it down for a few months and then it just was put back up this week. Is it a bad idea to keep the bird feeder there? I mean, I know the neighbors like it, but like 
if you keep it there all winter, do the birds think like, oh, I'm going to keep coming back to the spot and like, oh, now there's berries here. I'll eat these. I would assume that's why we took it down. I feel like we should take it down again. <laughs> like right now? Well, yeah, to stop the birds from coming. Oh, because they know where to go to get the seed, but yeah. they don't find the seed. They find the berries. We didn't have a problem with it this year. Probably because there was poop all over the berries. There was not poop on the berries. What berries were you talking about? I've never well, saw a berry with poop on it. It was just a bunch of leaves, I guess. Jeez. It didn't look great right underneath the No, I, I can uh, feeder. I can agree with you on that. Uh, Ink JMO said, I wonder if your neighbors watch your content or if they know you're YouTubers. I, th I think that they all know. The ones they all that, know what like, we do, I think. Yeah, and I, I do know that there's at least one set that watches what we do because when I talk to them, they know details that only a person who watches our videos. I can always weed them out. Like if, if people are like, oh, you know, they I love your videos, you know, but they know I, no details about anything. I'm like, hmm. I always assume that people do not watch our videos yeah. just because of the time commitment it takes. So it's they're, like, they're long and they're often. Yeah. Yeah. Randy Barton said, what were the most impactful changes made between last year and this year's winter interest? I think two things for me, uh, the evergreens, the amount of evergreens we've added and the pond area. Yeah. I think both of those things have made a tremendously huge impact on our garden. And we were talking before and uh, Aaron's talking about how like, especially when there's snow out, is it raining right now? It might be. Sorry. It's kind of misting outside. Is it? I'm like distracted. Um, you were saying how when the snow is out, you can really see where we need to add mm -hmm. more uh, than we even have now. But they just look good all year. All year, evergreens are great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we can do better planting more evergreens. Yeah. Heavier on the evergreens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marvin Martin said, is the little redwood a deciduous type? My golden dawn redwood loses all its needles every year. Maybe there's hope yet. That's what I'm hanging on to. No, it is dead. I don't, I don't know. I don't think we should make any decisions until like okay. well into spring. We'll see what happens. The home girl said, love the December garden tour. Did you ever consider using green giant thuyas for the hedges instead of the North Pole since they, uh, they're fast growers and make for a great hedge? Um, you know, I like green giants and the equivalent, the proven winner's equivalent is spring grove, which we do have planted out there. Um, and those are supposed to maintain a deeper green. Yeah, I asked him about it one time. I was like, um, you know, why do you sell this one? And they were like, well, the reason is because we think it's slightly more green in the winter and also the deer seem to graze on it less mm. than on the the green giants the green giants are like a really old variety I yeah think, they've right? been around like, for a long very time. popular yeah like everybody's got them mm -hmm. um, except for us we don't have any except for us yeah my parents yeah. have some beautiful ones in their vegetable yeah. garden but the reason we use north poles primarily in those especially those two long hedges is because the way we set up our space we were limited as to what the width could be of anything we planted in there and north poles stay between three and five feet wide as opposed to I don't know, somewhere between 10 and 20, like 15-ish, 15, 20 feet wide around the Green Giants, right? Mm -hmm. So that's significantly bigger, and we just didn't have the space in those two areas. Next video was new perennials for 2024, which uh, was much like the new annuals for 2024. I just wanted to sit down and talk about the new ones coming out, and I only have experience planting a handful of the new perennials, but we talked about all of them, and it's just fun to talk about this time of year when there's just not as much going on. If we can't be planting stuff, we can be talking about it and studying for next year. Uh, House Warman said, all of these names are so charming. If you could name a series of plants, what would you name it? I don't know that I've really given that much thought. I've given it zero thought. I do, I do um, appreciate some of the puns. Like I chuckle when I see some of the, you know, like the ridiculousness of the, mm -hmm. the puns that Proven Winners comes up with. But yeah, I don't know. Must have like a team sitting there just thinking up names. Remember we were at Four Star, uh, Marcy yeah. was talking about naming, I don't think they were talking about naming plants, but they were naming, oh, that bubble came out of my mouth. Oh, you had a bubble fly through the air. Yes. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> it was float through the air. I was like, what is that? I thought it was a fungus gnat. I'm like, no. No, that came out of my mouth. Oh, <laughs> How funny. So Marcy was talking about a uh, combination of plants. Yeah. Naming and, the combinations. And they were, I just remember them being really clever. And I was like, man, I could never come up with stuff like this. Because mm -hmm. uh, she, like, I don't remember what they were, but they were, they were applicable mm -hmm. for the color pattern right. that, you know, you saw the plants. I think uh, if I had an opportunity to name something, I'd probably name them after my kids. 
Samantha. Somehow. Samantha Grace. Like yeah. a rose called Samantha Grace. Sure. That would be a pretty name for a rose. I don't know what... Benjamin doesn't flow off the tongue quite as easily. No. I could think of something, though. I like the name Benjamin, though. It's like a good uh, it's solid, solid name. solid, strong name, yeah. Uh, next comment. Can someone explain the differences in zones, like why I can't plant a hydrangea in zone 9? I think there are some hydrangeas that span up to zone 9. But if it isn't, or the type that you're wanting doesn't span up to that, like, say, your hydrangea is a zone 3 through 8. Well, that means the zone 3 part, it's hardy down to negative whatever that is. 40? negative 40 degrees wow. Fahrenheit. Um, but the zone eight, the top end, means that if you're in a zone nine, you don't get enough cold hours for that plant to go dormant and be productive. Um, some plants need more than others, like dogwoods are a zone like two through seven. So they need quite a lot of cold. Don't quote me on that, they might be three through seven, but they need a lot of cold in order to do what they they have need, to sleep. The, yeah, like what they plants need, to need do. like a rest period. Yeah. So in your zone, you might just be too warm for some of those hydrangea varieties. Uh, Carrie said, "Will that Artemisia spread and become invasive like others?" <sighs> Mine hasn't yet. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> a lot of times, um, proven winners does not add things to their line that become problems. I mean, don't. It might not be about everything, mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of their thing. They find things that can, that stay smaller, that stay more compact, that don't run about like other things do. So anyway, we'll see what happens over time. I know Artemisia loves it where we're at. Um, so if it's going to spread for anybody, it'll spread for me. Uh, Holly K said, always exciting. Yes, your garden has grown so much in size these last couple of years. I have a question. Is maintenance done according to your zone map as before? Is that how Paul and Bethany managed to keep it so nice looking? The only reason I had a zone map was for employees that we had had in the past that weren't as <laughs> motivated as Paul and Bethany are. I have no zone map, and I honestly have no schedule for them. They just know what to do. Like, they are a gift. Yeah. They are an absolute gift. Um, so, you know, there are certain things that we have on a schedule, like there's fertilizing day, there's spraying day for budworms. Um, there are certain times of year where we do it in certain things, like there's the Christmas light weeks, there's the mulching weeks, you know, things like that. But they've got a pretty good... Yeah, they just kind of know, like, you know, clean uh, when it's important to clean up leaves and mm -hmm. where, yep. you know, the, the parts that are the most important. It's like, you know, you want to get all your leaves cleaned up before it snows mm -hmm. on the, from the grass. Yep. Um, things like that, where it's like, well, don't focus on the flower bed as much as... Yep cleaning them off the grass because they can mat and mm -hmm. ruin things. So things like that, they're always pretty good about they really are. jumping around and doing the correct thing at the correct time. Yeah. A zone map, I mean, we had it in the beginning when Paul started work with us and we didn't have as much space at that time either. Um, so I think it set, maybe set him on the right track of like how my brain was working, sure. what things I like to address. But I don't, like from day to day, most of the time I'm like, I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're working all the time and things look good. Um, so and occasionally I'll text them like, hey, could you, well, whatever, you know, if there's something, could you drip in these plants that I, I planted? Um, but most of all, I think they have their own kind of schedule of things. They have afforded us the ability to expand what yeah. we're doing. And that's, that's really fun mm -hmm. to have people that you can count on that, mm -hmm. to make sure that they got drip or yes. got cleaned out or right. you know got fertilized whatever yeah. the situation is mm -hmm. there's no way that you and i could handle it no not at all chris our fan said i know you work with proven winners and so all these new perennials are part of their line but do you ever get notifications from other plant companies about their new varieties coming out uh, maybe there aren't as many as proven winners is probably the giant of the industry but just curious i think that's kind of true that they're sort of the giant of the industry um and I, I don't know, I, I've talked to some other plant brands before and it feels to me like they don't, when they come out with new varieties, they're either one, not new, it's just something that they've added to their line, which can be true for Proven Winners too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that's not, that Proven Winners doesn't do that, but um, it seems like there's oftentimes less of like the improved type of things that other companies are coming out with. And maybe it's just because like we're not connected with them mm -hmm. as closely. So there could be a lot of stuff going on in the industry that we're unaware of. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think? Probably. I don't know. It just, they don't make as big of a splash. I yeah. So I don't know if like Proven Winners does such a good job, like marketing to us. Mm, maybe. You know what maybe. I mean? Like to where we yeah. get excited about it. Right. But I don't get excited about anybody else's stuff because it's like, it doesn't feel to me like they're 
like pushing boundaries or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like, you know, well, we added this plant to the line. I'm kind of like, I think that that plant plant has been available, but maybe it was under a different name. And I'm not saying that's wrong at all, you know, because Pravuna does it too. Um, But it's not, that's not as exciting, Mm -hmm. you know, when it's like new to you versus like just a different type of plant or whatever. Right. I don't know. Um, my Eden said, would you consider putting warm toned perennials in the dirt lands? Just curious. Probably not. I think we're going to stay away from perennials in the dirt lands. Yeah. No perennials. We'll do, um, we shrubs. Kinda... I said that about the South garden, just shrubs and trees, nothing with maintenance. And there's just maintenance all over the place out there. Well, what I really want to do is I want to pack it out hard with evergreens, like specifically evergreens, yeah. uh, deciduous too. Yeah. But like the first thing should be evergreens, like creating a hedge to mm-hmm. where you can't see past. Like I think enclosing that whole area in, mm-hmm. that's kind of my dream. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, Kathy said, so many new beautiful plants. Would you please tell me where and when you place your plant order for spring 2024? Um, you know, you can talk with your local garden center. A lot of them put in their pre-orders and they're ha- like my mom's always happy to order stuff for people. She's got a long list of special orders. And in fact, I put in some orders with her too. Usually she usually will, um, text me or call me and say, Hey, I'm putting my order in for, you know, do you want to add anything onto that? Cause she knows I like to do one big massive order in the spring. And then I like to work off of it and have it here. Um, and same with like greens. My dad calls me for that. Usually though, you know, so just run down to your local garden center and ask like, they who may does even- the ordering? Yeah, and they may even have a catalog for you to look at so you can see some of the things or you could put in your like, hey, these are some new plants if you see them. Sometimes growers don't have them the very first year. It takes a while for them to show up um, because some growers get kind of stuck in a a rut of the same kinds of things and they don't want to make room for new ones in the line, not always. Um, Anyway. All the growers that we've worked with though, they seem like they're on it. They're on it in terms of like wanting to bring in yeah. new things. We and work a lot with moss. Yeah, moss greenhouse. And they're amazing. They've done a great job. We've also worked with um, Olsons, and they did a great job, yeah. too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, our experiences, they are very accommodating and very fun to work with. Olsons Greenhouse is a little bit different, though, because they worked primarily with, like, Home Depots and Lowe's, big, I think. Like, big orders. Yeah, like, and then we had our little garden answer section yeah. in their So, like, Olsons would grow a ton of a smaller amount of things, smaller variety of mm-hmm. things. Whereas Moss Greenhouse seems like they grow like anything under Everything. the sun. Yeah. Like they've got it all, but yeah. they don't have like massive quantities mm-hmm. of any one thing, mm-hmm. but it's like whatever you need, they've got some right. of it. And it's nice to order for a moss because like if I decide to do a little extra of this or that, they always have it because they yeah. want to whatever we're growing, um, even the new ones, they get to get some too. And so they grow some on and usually they have a few extra that we can tack on if we need to. Uh, Ninja Orchids said, color, 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 would you consider testing the hosta in your garden as well as your parents' garden, which has more permanent shade? That is a phenomenal idea. Your parents have less shade. They do have a lot less shade now in their top garden anyway, but I think that that's a great idea. I have planted a number of hostas out there for them, probably like, oh, I would say that we've put in close to 20, if not more, in their garden, but the new one I'm so excited about, so that's a great idea. Last video for this week is Christmas shopping with my mom and Monica. Uh, we just, we finally settled on a date where we could all go over to Boise. We ended up going to no antique shops, um, which is usually what we do, you know, especially for videos. We love to hit antique stores and garden centers, but we did a lot of shopping and a lot I didn't show because I couldn't because they were gift related. Um, so, and I did show a few gifts because I don't, my grandparents, I don't know that they're on YouTube. So um, <laughs> anyway, I could show what I picked I up I know for they're them. not on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So I was able to show a few little things that I picked up as gifts, but I got a ton of beautiful ornaments that day. It was a good ornament year. Some years are good and some years aren't as good. You know, I just thought about it now. I'm surprised that we didn't get a copyright strike on that, on that video. Cause as I was Christmas going through carols. it, yeah, all the but background I think music. Christmas carols are pretty like, uh, isn't there a certain no. really? Yeah. They're all, hmm. they're maybe all we were louder than the, written. than the music. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Cynthia said, does anyone know what store they were in that had the retro looking ornaments? That is a department store called Dillard's. They have a pretty decent sized Christmas section that we decided to check out after we checked out the shoes. (laughs) And I did find quite a number of beautiful ornaments up there. Uh, Ben Benita said, how do you store all the unique type ornaments when the season's over? You don't even want to know. 
You don't want to know how I store them because you would all be aghast at my ornament storage. <laughs> They're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say it. No, I'll say it. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> so I get Rubbermaid tote and a roll of paper towels. And just kind of stack them. Start with the heavy ones first. Nobody touches the totes except for myself and Paul or Bethany. And all of us are very careful. And they're also stacked on shelves where nobody's accessing them or touching them all year. So I've looked at like permanent ornament storage and it's just not worth the money for me. Um, I don't have any ornaments break in storage ever. Just put a fragile yes. label on it. <laughs> Um, Amy said, love shopping with your mom and Monica. What kind of boots did your mom get? I'm looking for some also. Um, boy, I can't, I don't know the, the brand that she got. They're just kind of like an ankle boot that are black and more uh, sleek looking. She has some, like we both have Blundstones and then she's got another pair. I can't remember what, what brand they are, but they're just a little bit more like tough looking, like, you know, more tread and that sort of thing for working. But these were a little bit more ca uh, fancy. Hmm if a boot can be fancy. And I'm sorry, I don't know the brand. Remember to keep Samantha's first ballet shoes. I have my daughter's in a shadow box with a picture of her in her first tutu. That's such a cute idea. I will, I will save those. Um, Sandy said, love the update on Monica's, but dare I ask what happened to the greenhouse? Did she say Monica's? Yeah. Monica's? So, Monica's house. Oh. Um, the greenhouse is at Aaron's sister's house, Alyssa's house. Uh, so the greenhouse is in a separate garden. We kind of did two makeover yeah. sort of things this year and at our sister's houses. So it's still there and it's doing great. I think she's running a little heater in there. And she's is she? Got, yeah. Uh, Wiltrude said, will you maybe buy a bird of paradise plant in a pot? In summer, you can put it outside. Maybe. I don't know. They always got spider mites for me when I was taking care of them down at the garden center. <laughs> uh, so they're a pretty plant, but they're not like on top of my list of being a favorite. Teresa said, what beautiful ornaments you have? Question, are they all mostly glass? I have four grown children and wonder how do you prevent them from falling and breaking? Um, what a great day you three had. It was a great day. Uh, yes, they are all glass except for like the metal and gemstone ones. Uh, I wire them with florist wire. So instead of just doing an ornament hook, I get the green paddle wire and I wire on the top and then I wire the heck out of it to the tree. Like there's no like hitting it and like bumping it off the limb. That's not going to happen. Uh, it would have to pull out of the little holder on top, which I do know sometimes that happens. Um, so I try to nest them in the tree a little bit more on some of those expensive, like the Santas. Oh, I didn't realize that those uh, Santa ornaments were as expensive as they were until I cut the tags off of them when I got home. Anyway, they're beautiful and I'm happy to have them. Um, but we'll have to watch those, I guess. But our kids don't mess with the ornaments like they used to. No. I remember thinking this year is gonna be great because I can put window candles up again yeah. and I don't have a child going around and gathering all the window candles into one big bunch. Samantha does grab some of them. Sometimes. I left two extras out that she could play with. Yeah. Um, and they don't mess with the ornaments this year. It's wonderful. Bonnie said, love this video. Did Aaron edit this one? I think Ken did. No, yeah, Ken did. Yeah, and then I edited it <laughs> further. Ken is always on shopping videos. He leaves a lot more in than I leave in. I think I cut like six or seven minutes of it out mm -hmm. when I reviewed it, um, just because they get too long. And watching yourself shop, like I'm glad you guys enjoy the videos, <laughs> but watching yourself shop, those are tough ones for me to get through. Um, because the little clip inserted on how expensive the Santa ornaments were, this is priceless and seemed like Aaron's humor. That was totally Ken. I loved that too. Oh, wow. Um, my favorite parts are when you, your mom, and Monica say, oh, and mm-hmm, and unison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, San I actually cut a lot of those out. Really? Because I'm like, this is a lot. <laughs> like, I mean, I just take out like a second or two sure. seconds or whatever, so it wasn't so much. All right. You guys, that is it for today's recap video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, remember all the sales stuff on our website, guardhancer.com. I think that's it. Yeah. Hope you guys are having a great week. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.